How long do I think humans get to another galaxy? Until we get to another galaxy. You want to go there. Okay, so here's, all right. And I will end on this question. You had the final question of the night, okay? You want to go to another galaxy. You don't like the Milky Way, apparently. <laughs> it's, oh, <laughs> she said, it's average. <laughs> Hard to please women here, I guess. All right. Well, okay. There are bigger galaxies than the Milky Way, right? I will make a list for you for later. Uh, uh, the, the guy, the guy here says size doesn't matter. Um, the lady disagrees apparently. So uh, you want an awesome galaxy? The Google M87. That's it has a trillion stars. A trillion. You know how long it will take to count to a trillion? Thirty-one thousand years. You cannot count the number of stars in that galaxy. Sounds like that galaxy is made for you. All right, it has an awesome black hole in its center that's gobbling up all matter, clouds and stars that come by it. So you want an interesting galaxy to visit. So here's the problem. Here's the problem. The fastest spaceship we've ever launched, fastest, is now on the way to Pluto. There's a rule in astrophysics, if you do an experiment, you need the experiment to end before you die, okay? So to get to Pluto, they got a very light, space probe and put it on the biggest engines, rocket engines we had. So that way you have low mass, high thrust, you have high speed. At that speed, and I forgot the exact speed, it's some, uh, it got to the moon in six hours when it took astronauts three days to get there. All right? It passed the moon in six hours after launch. It's booking getting out there. If you, if you hitched a ride on that and said, aim for the nearest star, not Pluto, because it's going to get to Pluto in just two years, two or three years. If it's, go take it to the nearest star, this fastest hunk of hardware that humans have ever launched. When would you arrive at the nearest star to the sun? 50,000 years from now. That's the nearest star to the sun. Now, if two bumblebees <laughs> <laughs> That's really too obscure. I'm not going to use my bumblebee. Uh, so it's two stars out of a hundred billion. The nearest star is four light years away. Just found an Earth-like planet around that star, by the way. Take you 50,000 years to get there. How about across our galaxy? We are a hundred thousand light years across. Even if you could travel the speed of light, and we launched you, said goodbye, you will arrive at the other end of the galaxy 100,000 years later to us. And then by the time you got back, we would have all forgotten about you, all right? <laughs> if there's civilization at all. Now, in Star Trek, they got around this problem. They invoked the warp drive. What they said was, we're here, the edge of the galaxy is far. Let's warp the space between there and here. Okay, so there's the galaxy, and then you warp it. And then you take a bridge, what's essentially a wormhole, but the concept didn't exist at the original Star Trek. Later on, they would introduce it. You go a cut through the space. You warp the space, you go a bridge, and then you unwarp it. So that way, you don't actually cheat by going faster than light. You cheat by taking a tunnel through the fabric of space and time. End up on the other side of the galaxy during the TV commercial. See, that's how that works. So you get across there in two minutes rather than 100,000 years. Now, the nearest galaxy to us, big galaxy, is Andromeda, two million light years away. So at the speed of light, two million years. So, we're not going anywhere because the distances of space are incommensurate with the longevity of our biological form. So either we find a new understanding of the fabric of space-time, 
will you give up this dream of marrying a big galaxy, okay? <laughs> and I'll leave you with the following consideration. Um, I will not preclude the possibility that someone might one day invent a warp drive. Okay? <clears throat> I suppose that could happen. And then you warp space and we go anywhere in the universe we want. But you know what's cool? If you go to a faraway galaxy, let's say one that's M100, there's a name of a galaxy, M100. I told you to look up M87. There's another one called M100. It's 65 million light years away. You know what's cool? Light from the asteroid that is making the dinosaurs extinct is only just now reaching that galaxy. That is awesome. <laughs> so, in fact, if you bent space, went through a wormhole, came out the other side, you would have beaten the light. You'd get there in just a few minutes. You could go to that galaxy, whip out your telescope, and watch the extinction of the dinosaurs. <laughs> That's cool. That's just... You see things not as they are, but as they once were. And once you can travel back and forth among them, we're in a way traveling through time. And I don't know if we're mature enough to make that happen and to not uh, end our own civilization in so doing. You'll have the Time Lords. Well, that's <laughs> about what power you wish for, because who knows uh, what will necessarily come of it. I'd like to think it would be all used for peace and kindness, but there are people saying, we want space for, we want peaceful use of space. In space, I don't want any wars. And I think this is completely unrealistic, in fact, immature. Uh, I think there'll be plenty of wars in space. You know why? Because we have wars down here on Earth, right? If you can figure out a way to not have war in space, then why didn't you figure that out here on Earth, okay? Why, why do you have to go into space to not kill each other? Do that here. Then I'll have confidence that we can go in space and you can find whatever galaxy you want. Thank you all. For